point out to you. When you're transporting your boat, one of the things that you want to look at right off the bat is you want to look at spread. And what I mean by spread is how far apart are your cross beams going to be to your canoe. Um, the further the spread, the better it is for your canoe. Um, um, there are some theories on ideal spread, but a good rule of thumb is at least get it wide enough so that your cross beams are right about where your Yaku insertions are because this is the cockpit area is generally the strongest part of the canoe. So as far as being able to hold the force and the vibration and everything else, you have it there. Um, a, an advisory is, mine hangs off the back like this. If you know that you're gonna be stopping at gas stations, restaurants, wherever, you may wanna have a little less overhang. Um, even if you have a flag on the end, the reason being is I have far too many friends that have had the entire back end of their canoe ripped off by people charging through parking lots. Um, so if you are going to have overhang, be mindful of that overhang. And, and what you'll typically find, like the Dekines, it's got this nice thick, it's pretty heavy. These are really heavy duty. One thing I would suggest to you, and I sometimes don't do a good enough job of this, is frequently look at them. Like before you even lash it down, just run, run it through. Make sure there's no wear and tear because the last thing you want to have happen is these set of straps that you've had for seven years blow out on you on the freeway. Uh, different types of foams, different types of cradles. So you can actually get away with just your surf foam if you're going short distances. Like if I were just going to go over to La Jolla and drop in, I would I could easily use these. Um, you can use the foam cradles like this. I'll show you real quick how I would tie it down with this, um, and then I'll show you how I would tie it down with those. Um, I also like these these foam cradles too. The reason that I, I use those is just because sometimes I'm taking a canoe, sometimes I'm taking a board and I can just leave those on and it fits either one. Um, so make it simple. If you guys want to come around here, you'll be able to look straight down and see it. And again, I know this seems simple going over something as basic as tying it down, but like I said, I've known far too many people that have lost their canoes because they didn't take the proper precautions. So, so all of this is going just like you would think, right? You're just basically going to make a couple of U's. Go over the top, go under, back over the top, back under. this end and be done. The problem with just going here is it allows for too much slide. So especially if you're just using these, what I like to do is I like to come back around and really cinch it in. So I'll come back through on the other side. So over, under, cinch. Oh yeah, over, under cinch. Now I didn't put my buckle down just because I was doing this fast, but obviously you would move your buckle so it's under here and not digging into your boat like it's doing to mine right now. <laughs> and then you can just tie off on this side. So once you get it through here, I would just knot it off there. So again, these boats, especially this, because this is one of the, here you can see when I, I pushed on the uh, hurricane earlier, it didn't flex. This is a, a carbon Kevlar and you can see how much flex there is with the Kevlar. Um, points of They're pressure really digging right into those, right? And it's all on really, really tiny points. So, but that's why I prefer, if I'm going any distance, instead of using something like this, cut exactly for this boat, but you get the gist of how it fits. Again, it protects that hole a little bit better, Mary. Looking back on the track. 
around either your you can either loop it through here or loop it around the rudder itself um, you could just simply get a red flag and use a, an, an old rubber tire and wrap it around which is what I do a lot of times oh, it holds it in place. closer <laughs> no fun. the closer the ama is to the hull the less stable it's going to be the further away, obviously, you've got a longer lever arm. It's harder for that longer lever arm to lift up. It makes it more stable. Um, so that's one of the first adjustments you can make on just about all the canoes. The other adjustment that you can make is when you're going into the back of the ama. The higher up the yaku is, so the further away the, the yaku is from the ama, the less stable. The further in, the closer it is, Again, the more stable. So what that's going to do is, the further in this is, you can just see the, the pitch and the roll here on my boat. If it's down here, there's a natural lean in, right? It's going to keep you more stable. The higher up it is, the more balanced it is. So, so what do you trade with that? Efficiency or speed? Comfort first. Um, and that's something I'm going to talk about here in just a minute. Um, the best piece of advice that I ever got when I started paddling one man, um, I actually got from Casey Owens, uh, who paddles for Team California. He's been paddling for a long time. Um, a lot of you probably know him. He's a lifeguard here in San Diego. Um, great guy, great endurance athlete. I don't like to throw the word waterman around loosely, but I mean, he really is a true waterman. The best bit of advice I got from him, which he claims he stole from somebody else, but. I have a feeling he came up with it on his own. He said to me one day, we were out for a paddle together, and it's when I was first learning, and I was desperate to try and catch up to him and some of the faster guys. Um, he told me, learn to paddle well before you try to paddle fast. And I want to put the emphasis on that again. Learn to paddle well before you even try to paddle fast. So some people carry these 20 to 25 pound canoes, two and three people carrying them together to and from the water. The pet peeve for me is if you don't have the ability to carry your own boat, you shouldn't be out on the water by yourself. Um, there's, that's really what it comes down to. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways, the right way to be able to do this and balance it, regardless of how strong you are, regardless of how young or old you are, regardless of how big or small you are, um, because that's one of, one of my peeves. Uh, if you can't even carry your boat to the water, then you probably shouldn't be out on the water, right? There's a lot of things that can go wrong out there. You need to be at a certain level of fitness. It's just what, what you're gonna do is these boats have a certain balance to them, right? So one of the easier ways to carry it is if you come right up to where your seat is, you're gonna find the basic balance point, and it doesn't. It's regardless of hull design. Put your hand right over where you sit, grab a cross, and you can roll it right up to your shoulder and stand up. Again, it's only 20 or 25 pounds. It's not that heavy. When it becomes a real pain in the ass is if there's high winds, because now you've got 20 feet buffing you around. Now that's understandable. If you want to get help in those situations, that's fine. But on a day like today, everybody should be able to carry their own boat. Now you can see the balance. I can just let it sit here on my shoulder. Now you're probably wondering, well, what do I do with my water bottle and my paddle and everything else? Well, if you're going to have those things, put this down gently. You can carry all that extra stuff in your left hand when you carry it like that. So now when you come across, it's just right there. Boom. Right? Now, when is carrying it like this not a good idea? Nine times out of ten, this is a great idea. Like for me, if I'm going to walk over there and put in the water, this is the perfect way to carry it. When it might not be a good idea is if you're going into shore break. Right, so you're heading out through shore break. You probably don't want to go out into shore break ass backwards and have to turn yourself around. <laughs> so this is the alternative. I don't like carrying it this way normally, and you'll see why. So you can, again, find the center point. It's usually going to be where your butt goes. Get right underneath. You scoop it up here, and you're going to stand up. And it'll balance right on your shoulder again. 
Now you can see clearly the reason why I personally don't like to carry it this way. This mm -hmm. gets really annoying. Mm -hmm. But if you're going out into shore break, you're watching, you're watching, you're timing. And I know I saw the pictures from La Jolla Shores. I know some people have time with it. Wait, right? It's comfort again. Wait. It's better to be safe than sorry. When you see your spot, walk out. You can put it down. Once it's down, you can just hop right in. Right? So that's the best way to carry going if you're going out short break. So Chris, for a two-man, same thing, just two people? Um, for a two-man, is, is the only exception. This is, that's my pet peeve for one minute. For two mans, obviously, it's going to be you can carry it by the Yakus. It's a little bit longer. But two mans, most two mans, the max weight on them is going to be 45 or 50 pounds. Realistically speaking, one person can carry a two man, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it. Um, that pressure is enough to blow your seams out. Um, so you want to be, when you're done for the day, when you rinse it off, you wiped it down, it's ready to get put away, just pull your game plug out. Um, there's, there's two ways you can get back on your boat when you pull. You can get it back in your boat on the side or you can get back in your boat on the opposite side. Now, the first time you try, and this is why I tell you to paddle in the bay first because you should probably try this out a few times before you get in hairy situations. First time you try to get in on the, the right side, the non ama side, you're, you're gonna fall off three or four times. It happens every time. Basically, if you're getting in on this side, and it, whether you have a leash on or not, what you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna do big scissor kick and launch yourself like a dolphin. And you're gonna come straight across your hull this way with your chest leading first so you get as much of your body forward. What that does is that keeps the amida. So you get as much of yourself forward here and then you can swing your hips over and then you're back in the seat and you're good. Um, first time you try it, you're not going to get up out of the water enough. You're probably going to be exactly perpendicular to your boat and when you do that, it's going to come right over on top. <laughs> so practice coming, launching this way up over top. Get your chest as far forward and over the gunnels as you possibly can and then all you have to do is just swing this leg over and you're good, you're in the seat. Now the other way obviously is right here. I mean this is, this is totally simple. You can get in any number of ways. Some people will climb raggedly, <laughs> slowly, <laughs> and they'll make it over. You know, some people will lean back here, and they'll manage to weasel their, however you get in, that's fine. The one way that I will tell you not to get in on this side is the very first time when you're freaking out, when it's dark and it's cold, you're gonna push off in the arm of your foot. Don't do that, you'll crack the armor, uh, and then you'll really be in serious trouble. Um, so however you get in on this side, doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be sexy. It can be <laughs> slow and painful looking. Just don't push off the ammo with your foot because it's not designed to take pressure in that direction, you'll, you'll crack it. Um, I've seen it happen. But, but the uh, surprising thing is when you're wearing the leash and you hooli for the first time is... If you hooli for the first time and you try to get in on this side, what's going to happen is your leash is going to be around your boat. If you hooli and you get in on this side, you'll be fine, your leash is going to be where it should be, right? Because you hula, you fall out, you're on this side, you flip it over, you're on this side, your leash is still attached right here. Just falling out of my canoe, right? I've just rolled out, just righted my canoe. Now if I go in dolphin style, when I go to sit, I'm fine, right? My leash is right here. Once my leg goes in, my leash is in with me. Now, if I fall out, right, and I ride it from this side, where my leash is going to be, can you imagine me swimming under the boat? So I just swam under. Regardless of how I get back in the boat on this side, I'm going to end up looking just like this. All right, so that's why I, I encourage you to learn to do it this way, so you don't have to take this extra step. But obviously before you get going, you're going to straighten this out and take care of that. So the same will hold true with, the, with this leash. So same thing, again, if you're on this side and you're coming in, it's going to be fine. But if you come in the other side, it's going to be rough around. One's not better than that.